As the latest Cullen Davis trial gets underway, many people may wonder if this Fort Worth jury will hear anything the Amarillo jury didn't hear 10 years ago. Those 12 people found Cullen Davis not guilty of murdering his 12-year-old stepdaughter, Andrea. But now, Andrea's mother, Priscilla Davis, and her father, Jack Wilborn, are suing Davis for several million dollars in a wrongful death suit. And this morning, Wilborn offered some new testimony. He says in the fall of 1985, he met Cullen Davis at a church in Farmer's Branch. And that Davis said, can you ever forgive me for what I did? Wilburn says he replied, Cullen, I forgave you a long time ago. But Davis's attorney Steve Sumner says his client's remark about forgiveness referred to the fact that Priscilla Davis divorced Wilburn to marry Cullen. And when Sumner asked Wilburn about Davis's statement, Wilburn said, he didn't say, can you forgive me for murdering your daughter, but I felt certain that's what he meant. The jury also heard from Andrea's friend, Dana Lynn Arnold. She says she talked to Andrea on the phone the night she was killed, and that Andrea thought Cullen was mean, partly because he kicked her cat across the room, and she was very upset because of her love for animals. And Fort Worth Police Sergeant Claude Davis testified that on the night of the killings, he asked Davis why two people had to die, and he replied that there are some things you don't need a reason for. Testimony resumes Monday. Dave Cassidy, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth. In many ways, it's a strange scene at the Tarrant County Courthouse these days. 19 years ago, Priscilla Wilborn left her husband Jack to marry this man, Cullen Davis. Now, Priscilla Davis and Jack Wilborn are partners again in a lawsuit against Cullen. The Wilborns had a daughter, Andrea. When they divorced, Jack got custody. But sometimes he allowed Andrea to stay with her mother at Cullen's mansion. That's where she was the night of August 2nd, 1976. That's where the 12-year-old was shot to death. Priscilla's lover, Stan Farr, was killed too. Now a Fort Worth jury is hearing the same story an Amarillo jury heard about those killings. Those 12 people found Cullen Davis not guilty of murder. These 12 people will decide the civil case. Should Cullen pay Priscilla Davis and Jack Wilborn millions of dollars in damages? This morning, Jack Wilborn testified that two years ago, he met Cullen at a church in Farmer's Branch, that Davis said, can you ever forgive me for what I did? And that he told Davis, Cullen, I forgave you a long time ago. Davis's lawyer, Steve Sumner, says that forgiveness remark referred to the messy divorce, not Andrea's death. And another Davis, Fort Worth police officer Claude Davis, testified. He says on the night of the killings, he asked Cullen why two people had to die. And he replied that there are some things you don't need a reason for. There was one more witness, Andrea's friend, Dana Lynn Arnold. She's 25 now, a flight attendant for American Airlines. And looking at her, you're reminded that if she had lived, Andrea Wilborn would be grown up too. But she's been dead almost as long as she lived. And the latest trial to fix some blame for that is just starting. Dave Cassidy, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth. Let's say for a minute, you are Priscilla Davis. You say, 11 years ago, your estranged husband, Cullen, murdered your 12-year-old daughter in the basement of your home. And when you arrived, he shot you and killed your boyfriend, Stan Farr. You survive, and you think your husband will be convicted, but an Amarillo jury finds him not guilty. Then FBI agents say Cullen tried to hire a hitman to kill you and other people from his murder and divorce cases. They even have videotapes of money changing hands. Again, you think a jury will find him guilty, and again, you're wrong. Now, 11 years after your little girl died, you're suing your ex-husband for damages. And while the money is important, maybe it's more important to you for a jury, finally, to say your husband did it. Now, pretend you're Cullen Davis. You say you never shot anybody. You say you were set up by your estranged wife, Priscilla, greedy to get more money from you. Denied bond, you spend more than a year in jail until a jury finds you not guilty. Then a few months later, you're arrested again on murder for hire charges. You say the same people who framed you before have done it again. Again, you spend almost a year in jail, and again, a jury finds you not guilty. Now your former wife has you back in court on civil charges. You want it to be over, but first you want this jury to say you didn't kill anyone. And finally, let's say you're a member of the jury. Your problem is either Priscilla or Cullen isn't telling the truth. You have to sort it out. And until you do, you are the center of attention. Dave Cassidy, Channel 8 News.
Cullen Davis and his former wife Priscilla made it pretty clear how they felt about this wrongful death case on the very first day. Now, greed uh, motivates people more than any other thing, probably. I think they lost sight originally, and I hope to bring back what it was supposed to be all about, which is about my daughter and her death. Those feelings were reflected throughout the trial and during final arguments. A picture of Andrea Wilborn was on display during some of those arguments. Jack Wilborn and Priscilla Davis are suing Cullen Davis. They say he's the one who shot and killed Andrea 11 years ago. Davis was found not guilty of the criminal charge. And Priscilla's attorney Bob Gibbons told the jury, you are the conscience of this community. This is your chance to right a wrong. This case is screaming for justice. But defense attorney Steve Sumner echoed Cullen when he said, this lawsuit is all about money. Priscilla was demanding $50 million in her divorce case, and that affects her credibility. As for testimony showing Davis's wife, Karen, never told police or the grand jury Cullen was in bed with her at the time of the shootings, Sumner said, if Cullen and Karen were conspiring to cover up murder, don't you think they could have done a better job? But later, Gibbons said, truth is like a football. You can kick it around all day, but it's going to come back the same. Now the jury members have a chance to kick things around for a while as they try to decide if Cullen Davis killed his stepdaughter, and if so, what the loss of that young life is worth. Dave Cassidy, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth. They had waited through four days of deliberations, deliberations over Priscilla Davis's contention. It was Cullen Davis, who dressed in black one night in 1976, killed her 12-year-old daughter, Andrea Wilborn, and wounded her. Priscilla was joined in the lawsuit by the girl's father, Jack Wilborn. They asked the jury to award $16.5 million to them if they agreed. But three times, the jury told Judge Claude Williams they were deadlocked. And finally, this afternoon, he agreed and declared a mistrial. For Cullen Davis and his supporters, there was joy. A mistrial may not have been as good as winning outright, but he was satisfied and hoped this would end his court battles with his former wife. But uh, hopefully that uh, I've got her behind me now. I don't know uh, how she will pop up in the next case, and I, uh, that remains to be seen. Priscilla had said from the beginning if there was a mistrial, she would not bring the case back to court. Still, she refused to believe the jury did not agree with her contention. Cullen Davis did the shooting. I did see Cullen murder Stan. I saw him shoot me. I know Bev saw Cullen shoot Bubba. And he, we were all shot with the same gun that killed Andrea. So I will go to my grave knowing that Cullen Davis killed my child. Most of the jury left quickly following Judge Williams' ruling, but an angry jury foreman, Kenneth Poole, confirmed to reporters the jury had been split since Friday. Eight believing Cullen Davis did the shooting, four not. And the evidence showed that Cullen Davis killed them people, and I can't believe that, that people wouldn't look at that evidence, and it, and it tears me apart. It, it really does tear me apart to see that. For courtroom supporters of Cullen Davis, mostly born-again Christians who were members of his church, the trial was more than fair. And tonight, they celebrate his deliverance by the jury. John McKay, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth. Like all the other cases involving the shooting at the Davis Mansion back in August of 1976, the central question in this trial was, did Cullen Davis do the shooting? Was he the man in black who killed his 12-year-old stepdaughter, Andrea Wilborn, and shot then-wife Priscilla Davis and two others? He had been acquitted of any criminal charges in the case, but this was a civil matter. Priscilla Davis and Jack Wilborn were suing for $16.5 million as Andrea's parents. To win, they first had to convince the jury Cullen did the shooting. But the jurors were deadlocked from the very beginning, and today, faced with no alternative, Judge Claude Williams declared a mistrial. And a happy Cullen Davis finally answered the question never asked at the trial. How would you answer that? Were you the man in black? No, I was not the man in black. And, uh, did you shoot Andrea Wilburn? I, I did not shoot Andrea Wilburn. Right. Supporters from his church had filled the courtroom in support for days. But outside, Priscilla, who has promised not to take the case back to court, continued to insist the man who was now a born-again Christian was the same man who shot her. And he, we were all shot with the same gun that killed Andrea. So I will go to my grave knowing that 
Cullen Davis killed my child. For the jury, it ended four difficult days of deliberations. It had been obvious since Friday they were having a problem reaching a verdict. Ten votes were needed to decide the case one way or the other, but an eight to four split in favor of Priscilla and Jack Wilborn kept them from reaching a decision. In the end, those in the majority said they just could not convince two other jurors to join them. It's so hard to say what the problem was because nobody would tell me what the problem was. I asked specifically, I'll, I'll even go along with you if you can show me why you base your opinion on this, and they wouldn't tell me nothing. For Cullen Davis, the days in court are over for now, but he will be back in September when the estate lawyers for another victim of the 1976 shooting take him to court. John McKay, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth. It's great to have an alibi witness as long as he's telling the truth. This morning, Cullen Davis had to admit one of his alibi witnesses didn't tell the truth. Tuesday, Lewis Klassen said he was an usher at the Western Hills Theater the night of the killings and that he saw Davis at the movies that night. That's where Davis says he saw the Bad News Bears. But in court today, Bob Gibbons, a lawyer for Priscilla Davis, told Cullen, you and I both know he didn't even work there in August 1976. Davis said his attorneys are now aware of that. And later, Davis's lawyer Steve Sumner said he would withdraw Klassen's testimony. This is one more example of how this civil trial differs from Davis's criminal trials. Davis's attorney, Racehorse Haynes, dominated those cases. His defense team seldom made any big mistakes. This time, it's Priscilla Davis's attorney, Bob Gibbons, who generally has the upper hand. Judge Claude Williams has ruled in Gibbons' favor so many times that when he ruled in Sumner's favor today, Gibbons didn't seem to understand him at first. Since the killings at the mansion occurred around midnight and Davis says he went to the movie at 9.30, it may be the jury didn't think the movie usher's testimony was any big deal. But anytime you have to admit one of your witnesses did not tell the truth, it's not one of your better days. Dave Cassidy, Channel 8 News. For several years in the late 70s, Karen Master Davis was the second best known woman in Fort Worth. She lived with Cullen Davis after he separated from his wife, Priscilla. And during his criminal trials, Karen was Cullen's champion. Cullen Davis has the heart of a man who is honest, sincere, and a law-abiding citizen. And in his murder trial, Karen provided Davis with an alibi that he was in bed with her when the shootings took place at his mansion. They were married in 1979, and now they're back in court in the wrongful death suit brought by Priscilla Davis and Jack Wilburn. Davis attorney Steve Sumner asked Karen if back in 76, she knew of any bad feelings between Cullen and Priscilla's new lover, former TCU basketball player Stan Farr. Priscilla says Cullen killed him shortly after midnight on August 3rd. But Karen said she and Cullen saw Stan and Priscilla that summer, and Cullen took a chair and stood on the chair and tried to make himself as tall as Stan. Cullen called Stan too tall. And Sumner asked her the first thing she remembered after falling asleep the night of August 2nd. I woke up, I looked at the lighted digital clock, and the time said 12.40, and I saw Cullen there in bed, and I went back to sleep. It's expected Priscilla's attorney, Bob Gibbons, will ask Karen why she didn't tell that to the grand jury one week after the shootings. But first, Gibbons asked about some other grand jury testimony, that Cullen told her he got home around 11 that night. Monday, Davis testified he went to the Western Hills Theater to see the Bad News Bears, and it wasn't over until 11.30. Gibbons. If Cullen Davis went to a movie like he says until 11.30, there's no way he could have gotten home at 11 o'clock. Karen, I was wrong. I am the one that was wrong. Gibbons, either you were wrong or he was wrong. Karen, it was me. After the questioning of Karen Davis concludes Thursday, Cullen Davis will take the stand again. Dave Cassidy, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth. Eleven summers ago, Cullen Davis turned Fort Worth upside down, and things weren't the same for years. The millionaire was arrested for murder, charged with a shooting spree at his Fort Worth mansion, wounding his estranged wife Priscilla and killing her 12-year-old daughter Andrea and Stan Farr, Priscilla's lover. For months, some people were almost obsessed with this question. That was how the criminal cases went. 
Now almost 11 years after the shootings, Davis is back in court. Priscilla Davis and Andrea's father, Jack Wilburn, are suing him for several million dollars. Uh, I didn't think it would take this long. And I think once it got here, I didn't really believe it was going to happen, but I, I do now. Are that we're going to prove by circumstantial evidence and direct evidence who shot this little girl and who shot Priscilla. And who is that? The defendant that we're suing. Colin Davis. Colin Davis. Yes, uh, we get to go through it again and and uh, probably again after that if, you know, greed uh, motivates people more than any other thing. In the criminal trials, Racehorse Haynes managed to put Priscilla Davis on trial, attacking her credibility by attacking her lifestyle. That may be harder this time. Case When the issue is one of money rather than human life or freedom, the court systems say that you just don't have the leeway that you do in a, in a criminal case. And once a jury is seated, Priscilla's lawyers won't have to convince all 12 jurors she's right, just 10 of them. But choosing that jury may take a while. If you lived in Tarrant County 10 years ago, chances are you had some opinion about the Davises. And for many people, setting those opinions aside may not be easy. Dave Cassidy, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth.